So last year I made a video about how to mount a TV on a wall and it was actually in this room. It's not this specific TV because we changed the TV but it was in this room. And in that video I mentioned that the key ingredient was to hide the cables behind the sheetrock so that there's no cables dangling from the TV. And how you hide the cables and plugs in the bottom is by putting a TV console there. Now in our house we did a little bit of shuffling, hence a new TV here. And as a result, we're left with no TV console here. So we have a bit of a mess there and all the cables are showing. I mean, I could go out and buy a TV console right now, but the issue with that is that I would need something that fits this exact spot and is able to hide all the plugs and outlets that are over there. Hey, look, the cat is walking around. And also, what's the fun in that? So what I decided that I'm going to do is build my own. And honestly, I don't really want to spend a lot of money, so I'm going to try to keep it really, really cheap and hopefully it turns out decent. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I build the TV console to be able to hide all the cables here and maybe that will inspire you to build your own. The project started off with a visit to my local hardware store to get all the materials I'm going to need. In terms of lumber, all I need for this project are two 2x12 boards, each being 8 feet in length, and one 2x4. I did have a spare 2x4 at home, so I just needed to get the 2x12s. Ideally, I would have liked to use 1x12s instead, but for some reason, 1x boards is significantly more expensive than 2x boards, and I wanted to really keep the cost to a minimum for this project. Another thing I picked up was a 1 8 inch tempered hardboard. This will be used as the backing material for the TV console. Given that I already have the 2x4, the total cost of my Home Depot trip was roughly $40. But keep in mind, I already have all the screws, glue and some other consumables at home so I didn't have to buy anything else. And also, you do need some power tools for this but it's the basic ones like a drill and a circular saw. But I'm not factoring in those costs when I give you numbers. As you can see, the 2x12s barely fit in my car, so if you're making a trip to the hardware store, make sure you have a car that can fit the materials. The first step in the build process is to cut the 2x12s to length. I want my console to be 6 feet wide, so I cut out a 6 feet piece from each of the two boards. I used a speed square to guide my circular saw as I made the cuts. When measuring out the second board for cutting, I use the first board that I cut as my reference. Because what matters is not that they're exactly 6 feet long, but that they're the exact same length. And this is a way you can make sure of that. It's now time to cut the sides. Depending on how many compartments you want, you'll need to cut that many plus one of these side pieces. I only want two compartments, so for me, I needed to cut three of these pieces. Since I was only cutting 9 inch pieces, I had plenty of lumber to work with from just the spare ones from my larger cuts. I then went on to do some sanding on certain sides of the boards. Normally sanding is something I do at the very end, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fit my orbital sander in certain areas once I assembled everything. I mostly just used 60 grit sandpaper for this round of sanding just to even out any imperfections in the lumber. Later on when everything is assembled, I'll be using 220 grit to smooth out all the visible sides of the console. Another step that I normally do at the end is use a trim router to round over all the visible edges. But once again, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fit my router in certain areas once fully assembled. So I went ahead and rounded over the edges that I wasn't sure about. A trim router is one of my favorite power tools. And the particular one that I have is a Ryobi one and it was only $50 when I bought it. For what it does, it was a steal, especially compared to the other brands. Speaking of tools I really love, this one is called a pocket hole jig. Essentially what this does is acts as a guide to drill diagonal holes along the side of a board where you can use screws to join it to another piece of board. The idea is that your screws are hidden rather than having the screw heads be visible on a surface. But you do have to make sure you place these holes somewhere that is not going to be visible. For the three 9 inch side pieces, I drilled three pocket holes on each. I'm using pocket holes for only the edge that will join with the top of the console. For the bottom side, I can drive screws directly since it won't be visible. I'm also using wood glue along with pocket pocket hole screws for a stronger joint. You can actually build this entire console with just using wood glue but that would involve clamping and waiting for it to dry. Ain't nobody got time for that. If you're trying to figure out the orientation, the bottom long piece of board is actually what will be on top. So I have it upside down for easier assembly. I do wish I had some 90 degree clamps to hold the boards together while I drove the screws but I managed with what I had, my two hands.
Since I'm assembling it upside down, the board I'm putting on top is actually the side that will be at the bottom. And like I said earlier, I didn't bother with pocket holes for this side since I can just drive the screws directly and it won't be visible. I used 2.5 inch screws and I only used 9 in total for the bottom piece. For the legs, I used 4 pieces of 2x4s. The length of the legs will determine how high off the ground it will sit. For me, I needed the legs to be 8 inches long to make sure the console covers all the outlets and cables in the back. I used the same strategy of cutting one first and using that one as a reference to cut the rest. A tiny bit of difference in length can cause some annoying wobble. I'm gonna join the legs using pocket holes, so I drilled two pocket holes on each leg. By the way, I'm gonna leave Amazon affiliate links for the pocket hole jig as well as some of the other tools I'm using in the description of this video. If you use any of the links to buy anything, I get a small kickback from Amazon. It goes a long way in helping me grow this channel. When it came to joining the legs to the bottom of the console, I made sure to orient the legs in a way so that the pocket holes face the back. Since the console will be against the wall, no one will be able to see them. If the pocket holes really bother you, there's actually ways you can cover them up with small dowels. But I'm not gonna bother with that. Once the legs are installed, the overall structure is pretty much done. Now it's just a matter of making it pretty. And pretty is a subjective word. So you can decide how far you want to take it. I got started again with my orbital sander. I first used 60 grit sandpaper to smooth out all the joints. So if an edge was sticking out too much, I used the sander to sand it down so that it seemed flush. After that, I used 220 grit sandpaper to make all the touchable surfaces super smooth. I brought out the trim router again and started to round out all the remaining edges. This process is really satisfying. I would say rounding out edges of DIY furniture is like the secret sauce. That can really make the difference when it comes to making the furniture look professionally made. But using a sander and a trim router can get messy, so make sure to use some sort of mask and eye protection. Also have a vacuum or a blower handy to clean up afterwards. Speaking of cleaning up, before I went on to apply stain, I took a wet cloth and wiped down the console. All the fine dust from sanding tends to stick around and you want to make sure that it's clean before staining. When it came to staining, I just poured some stain on the surface and used a paintbrush to spread it out on each surface. I had this golden oak colored stain laying around so I just used that. Like I said earlier, how pretty you want to make it is entirely up to you. You could even go with a glossy finish on top of the stain. For me, I was satisfied with just staining it so I didn't bother with any additional coatings. The thing with stain is that the look will depend entirely on how the lumber absorbs it. If you want to avoid taking a chance, you can always just use paint but I like the look of the wood grain so I prefer staining. The final piece of the console is the backing. The whole point of building this is to hide the outlets and cabling so without a backing, it's kind of pointless. I got this 1 8 inch hardboard for the backing. Since it came in 2 feet by 4 feet size, I had to cut it down into 2 pieces. I wanted to make sure that the seam where the 2 pieces meet is on the middle support column so I measured it out and went at it with a circular saw. I used a 4 foot level as a straight edge to guide the saw for a perfectly straight cut. When it came to attaching the backing, I took the console inside the house since I had to lay it flat on the ground. I didn't want it to get scuffed up while trying to do it outside. Normally you want to use nails for this step, but I don't have a brad nailer so I would have had to use a hammer. I decided to use a few screws instead. One final thing I wanted to do was make a hole in each compartment for passing through cables. I used a hole saw bit on my drill and made the holes near the bottom of each compartment so that it's easily hidden behind whatever I decide to put there. And that's pretty much it. So I've placed it under the TV and it's covering up all the wall plugs and hiding all the cables behind it. And yes, those are two VCRs. Ideally I would like to have PS5s there but we can't always have what we want. But as you can tell, I'm not really using this for any utility in terms of electronics. The only actual device that's connected to this TV is actually a Roku device which is actually hidden behind the TV. So I'm not even using this console for that. But I do plan on putting a soundbar in the future and this will be perfect for that. For now, this is all just tentative decorations and hopefully we'll find some better decors to put on there. But it definitely looks better than it was before I put it there. 
Now, don't forget, it only costed about $40 worth of materials to build this thing. So when it comes to the actual cost, it's almost negligible. But when it comes to your labor, well, that depends on how much you value your own time. But I enjoyed building it, so no regrets. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. As always, stay safe and I'll see you again on the next one.